Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft and welcome back to Modelling for Beginners Building the Airfix Mosquito PR16 along with me. So, actual episode 2 then. So I've disassembled these parts again. I did use the fuselage as a jig and I now have a perfectly aligned internal part. Nice and glued up, nice and solid and next thing we need to do is get some colour on these parts because once the fuselage halves are cemented together we won't be able to get in there to paint anything properly if you're not worried about it being painted properly then <laughs> what means go ahead so painting it then we need to know what color everything needs to be so on the instructions we do have color references in these square boxes which have a paintbrush inside them so that you can tell visually that it's meant to be a painting instruction and of course the assembly icon glossary is on the first page of the instructions. So if you're not, if you're not sure what a symbol throughout the instructions is actually meaning, you just nip back, check this, and here you see Humbrol paint number. So internal parts then Humbrol 78. So just nip through all these first few steps and take note of the colours. Most things are, are Humbrol 78. We've got the odd thing like this box here 33 that being black and then sort of assorted seat colours so all we're interested in at this stage is the main overall colour and what I always do is separate everything into piles effectively of what needs to be each colour or at least mostly each colour so 78 or interior green this side And black parts over here this is a, another completely different color on its own let's put that to one side for now um, and then also just flick forward through the instructions to make sure if there's anything else that's going to need painting with the internal colors at this point before we jo join the half so we're only looking up until step 13 and what you can see we've identified here this part G18 the little bulkhead for the tower wheel that will need painting too so here it is and of course the instructions here helpfully show you exactly how much of that internal area that you really need to paint so for the purposes of right now we need to paint things in interior green and in black so for inter interior green then I'm going to put this in my Tamiya Extra Thin blue tack storage receptacle so that I don't lose it there we go right interior green then Humbrol 78 by all means use Humbrol 78 if you use Humbrol and you've got it um, I don't use Humbrol paints um, so I'm going to, to with this build throughout I'm going to use the paints that I do normally use and that is generally speaking either Tamiya or Gunze Sangyo Mr. Hobby Aqueous, but I do also use quite a lot of Mr. Colour, which is the lacquer base paint, and in fact, Tamiya lacquer paint as well, along with a few bits and pieces of other things. But anyway, interior green, talking in terms of Tamiya, pretty much the most reasonable representation is XF71. It is labelled as cockpit green, but in brackets, you can see it's got IJN, that means Imperial Japanese Navy. So technically, this is Imperial Japanese Navy interior green, but it's not a terrible match for the accepted Royal Air Force interior green colour. But it's not perfect, it's very, very dark. And in fact, being honest, the majority of uh, so say labelled RF interior green paints are really quite a lot too dark. So because of that, I've ended up with this. This is Again, nominally, Mr. Colour C364, British Aircraft Grey Green, Semi Gloss, World War II, Aircraft Cockpit, etc. Um, BS283. And it started off similar, but maybe a touch lighter than the next F71. But over time, and I have been using this jar for quite a long time now, what I've been doing is just mixing it as I go along. And effectively, what I'm about to show you when I get the lid off because I've been using it so long that the paint has formed its own ceiling this is my RAF cockpit green colour 
to get that colour, essentially, if I pop that down there, it's pretty much 50-50 mix of XF71 and XF21 Sky. So if you look at the bottom, I've stirred these properly so that you can see. If you look at these together, you can see that my interior green is really not that much darker than Sky. And this is based on um, photographs of recovered pieces of aircraft, photographs, all sorts of things. I don't know why it has become the accepted norm that RAF cockpit green looks so dark in model form, but having it a lot lighter serves as, as modelers as well because it makes the interior easier to see actually once you've uh, got it painted and everything built. So we need to get this in the airbrush. I did have a comment, I think it, it was on the YouTube, but, um, asking if I if I might brush paint the model <laughs> and show how that's done. Uh, I'm not laughing at the comment, but I, I just simply don't have the skill. I haven't brush painted the external surfaces of a model in, in 20 odd years. Um, it, it's something I, I just don't possess the ability to do that to a decent standard anymore. So if I ever did, <laughs> so I'm sorry, but this will be airbrushed. Uh, and hopefully it will serve as a sort of um, a little bit of an introduction to airbrushing for those that aren't well used to it as well. Now, something I do see mentioned a lot um, around the place is how to hold parts for painting. I know a lot of people will paint pieces while they're still attached to the sprues. And that is uh, perfectly valid in some cases, actually. You can do that if, if the attachment point is in such a place that it's not going to cause issues for touching up and cleaning up the part once you do remove it from the sprue then that's a completely valid way of doing things this bulkhead for example I could easily have painted whilst attached still to that little piece of sprue you saw it on a moment ago but what I tend to do is if, is actually build up the parts into as big a sub-assembly as I can that I can still sensibly paint properly to my eyes anyway uh, again that level is going to vary from modeler to modeler so what I've done I have attached that bulkhead into the back here. There's no detail painting required on it, so there's no reason not to attach that before painting. And I have attached this this part, which is a, some sort of representation of, of control runs probably, and the backrest for the navigator's seat and the control column. have all now been attached to that internal structure because I can still get at those to perform the detail painting that requires after the painting and it saves having having to hold tiny fiddly little pieces and it also saves a potential bad glue joint because of the paint being in the way. And we're left with these three pieces separate for the green. What I've also discovered, happily, is that the instrument panel is quite a tight fit into its notch here. So I can press that into position and it will sit there and that's going to sit there sufficiently well that I can spray that in situ and then just pop it off again to detail paint and add the instrument panel decal itself. So I'll leave that there for painting. I did test the idea of having the seat in position also. It sits there but I'm not going to be able to get in well enough you essentially need to make a choice. You can fit the control column or the seat, but not both. I'm much less likely to ping the seat unit into oblivion whilst trying to paint it than I am the control column, so that's why I've chosen that. And the only reason this aft bulkhead isn't fitted now is that I do have to do some detail painting in black, and that will be much easier while the part is still loose. Just sew that in situ so you can see what I mean possible certainly but just not as easy so how do we hold parts for painting all sorts of ways that's that sorted the most common for me is using a spatula and I have a selection of spatula type items here these are wooden tongue depressor spatulas which I just bought a box of um, years and years and years ago and clearly they get used over and over again so it's not a huge expense anyway, but they will last you and last you and last you. If you don't want to do that, 
and don't tell anyone I told you this, but <laughs> just go to Costa. Costa, Starbucks, motorway services, anywhere. They all have these uh, apparently environmentally friendly wooden stirring sticks. So if you were to accidentally pick up, you know, three or four of these each time you got a coffee instead of just one, you would pretty soon... <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> no, I'm telling people to steal. Even if you only saved the one that you were using and took it home with you, you'd pretty soon end up with a reasonable collection of spatula sticks. So certainly if you drink as much coffee as I do. Uh, the other thing you can use, and I do frequently use, is actually cocktail sticks. Again, very cheap and easy to come by. Um, you simply, if there's a hole in the part, you can just wedge the cocktail stick into it like that. Perfect holding device for painting. If the hole in the part, such as here, is too big for the cocktail stick to wedge, you can, you can go up a threat level and use a kitchen skewer, wooden, the wooden style. Um, if those are too small still, then you can uh, you can just use a little bit of super glue and a cocktail stick because once you've finished, you can just break the cocktail stick back out again. But with a little bit of ingenuity and a selection of different sizes of sticks, you can mount everything quite happily usually. This one doesn't need painting on the bottom, so I'll, these parts I'll mount to the spatula to show you how. So you need some tape. You can use blue tack, of course, but I most often use tape. Take off a section of tape and grab a couple more. Use all your fingers so you've got everything ready. And then you need to put the tape onto the spatula the wrong way up, so stick your side up. And then hold it down with your other pieces of tape, like so. And when you put the second one on, just stretch it. You don't want it all flapping about like that. You want it nice and tight, like so. Fold the ends over. So now I've got a sticky stick. And I can just stick, I can just drop that part on there face up. And that's not going anywhere. The, the spray is not going to dislodge that anytime soon. So that's that one. I want this part to be black, so I'm going to put that onto a different stick. Let's use a, one of these small ones. If you do have uh, any sort of cheaper gash tape sitting about, then obviously use that rather than the Tamiya stuff. Okay, another sticky stick and pop the part on there. Jobs are good. And so we've got our black parts mounted. This piece, this sort of um, gun sight looking thing, it's too, you could super glue that down to something via its mounting post, but what I'm actually gonna do is spray it just like this. I will hold it in fine pointed tweezers and I'll hold the area of the part which sticks into the floor so that it, it the, the blank spot won't matter. So here we go. That's all the parts mounted, ready for spraying, and I've not had to glue anything on. If you do glue a cocktail stick into something like this, all you do when you want to remove it is simply twist it, and the cocktail stick will break. It will just snap straight out of the glue. It's not going to be an issue. Any little bit of glue and your shreds of cocktail stick will be up inside there where no one's ever going to see it. If the cocktail stick is just a tad too small, note, as with kitchen skewers, they're tapered. So if it's a little bit loose, just snip off a little bit of the end until, there you go, it wedges in nice and snug. You don't want it too tight, you don't want to be breaking things by pushing the sticks in too hard. And there we go, that's our pieces mounted, ready for painting. So let's get some paint mixed up in the airbrush and get some colour on this thing. So let's get the paint ready first. Um, these will need your color needs to be mixed properly for the color to be right uh, so I have stirred the paint already thoroughly with a stirring stick this is a, a proprietary Tamiya 
paint stirring spoon but clearly you can use pretty much any suitable stick for the job once it's all stirred up thoroughly what I then will do normally is put the lid back on and give it a super good shake just to get everything nicely mixed together now you'll note from the sound that this this particular paint is already quite thin and that's because as I've said it's just developed over time and it gets topped up all the time so it's already pretty much at a sprayable consistency but it's not quite so what I'll do get my airbrush standard ordinary airbrush you don't need anything fine or wonderful for this at this stage we're just blocking colour in and my thinner now one of the reasons I use the paints I do is that they are all able to be thinned with the same thinner which saves any confusion and takes away most of the opportunity to make mistakes um, so this is Mr Colour Thinner, I've just put it in this small dropper bottle for convenience and I'll just pop a little bit of thinners straight in my airbrush. Put the thinners in first to alleviate the thing where the thick unmixed paint goes straight down inside and this is the reason a lot of modellers will mix their paint externally to the brush you know in a little container or something but that is it's great but it's massively wasteful of paint and effort so that's why I don't do it. Just, just pop a bit of paint in. Again I'm very very familiar with how I want my paint to be so I generally get these best guesses pretty much right. But what you're looking for, I'm stirring it with an old paintbrush, is when you pop it on the edge of the colour cup just look how it rolls down the side of, th of the airbrush cup you can see that that's a nice viscosity you can see that it's not see-through but it also isn't thick if when you let me do it again so on this clean part of the color cup I've got paint in my brush and I just get myself right there touch it and see how that runs down it's a lovely viscosity now if it did that but you could see straight through it straight through the color you'd know that you're probably a little bit thin on the paint all right now in order to just absolutely mix it I'm going to do what a lot of people hate I'm using a tissue block the end of the brush bubble bubble toilet trouble and that should make sure that the paint that's right in the end gets mixed up as well and then I'm just going to very very unsubtly spray the tissue so the first few bits and then make sure that I've got the sort of flow that I want which I have turn the air down so it's not as noisy so I don't this is exactly how I mix paint all the time I don't use formulas I don't measure things I've just learnt over time what a good paint mix looks like um, and feels like for want of a better word so that's what I aim for each time so that's why I'm not going to sit here and spout formulas and measurements because I think it's better if you just come to recognise what a good paint mix should look like and then you don't need to worry about measuring things yourselves. Right then, now let's start painting.
hopefully it's obvious from watching that the paint is flowing smoothly it's going on nicely I'm not putting it on too dry if you put it on too dry you know if you missed it on all that's going to happen is you're going to have an uneven paint surface and it's not going to stick as well frankly so you put it on a little bit wetly not so much so that you're flooding the part but just enough as I am doing and you won't go far wrong When painting a part like this obviously you need to turn it and turn it and do it you know spray from all the different angles to make sure that uh, you get everything covered um, but if I were to just drop this back on the bench the paint's just wet enough that I will mark it so I'll just stick it in something I have over, over in the edge of my bench I've got this enormous lump of plasticine and as you can see that's where stuff gets stuck to dry and now the black parts. Note that these have been masked, nothing very scientific. Just a quick bit of tape just to cover up the bit that needs to stay green in both of these cases. Sometimes there's not really any option but just to hold the part for a few minutes just until the paint just airs off a touch and that's another another advantage with using uh, the lacquer paints and the acrylics that are thinned with the lacquer thinner is it does dry exceptionally quickly uh, so literally within 30 seconds usually maybe even less you can just pop the part down as long as you're not strongly handling it it will be fine it just sat on the side of the desk like quick word on health and safety then I'm using lacquer paints and I'm using acrylic paints thinned with lacquer thinner clearly these aren't necessarily the most friendly to your body um, so do you need a mask it's up to you I use this if I'm spraying anything very much rattle 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 I've got this little JSP mask with the press checks so when you fit it to your face you press that and if the mask kind of sucks in on your face then you know that these are working um, this is I mean honestly I'd say it's probably overkill for the vast majority of what we do as modelers but 16 odd pounds on Amazon this uh, so for such a small investment you are protecting yourself some people are very sensitive to things like paint fumes and it's as well not to expose yourself to it unless you must. Um, another point with using uh, lacquer based paints is you can't clean them out of the brush with something as benign as isopropyl alcohol. You need to use a lacquer thinner. What you don't want to be doing is using Mr Colour Thinner for this or should I say Angel's Tears. It is very expensive. This this size container which is 400 millilitres it's not even half a litre is around 10 pounds 
so you don't want to be using that to flush your airbrush out I use this Tetrasil standard thinners this is a five litre can as you can see and it will cost you for this much 15 pounds maybe ish and clearly that's going to last a lot of time it's well worth considering if you have a group of friends or if you're part of a club buy it as part of the club and decant it off into smaller containers for each one to use i also do have you can't see it and you can't hear it but i do have an extractor type spray booth on my left and what i do is i'm turning that on in between takes but hopefully it's also obvious that the amount of actual overspray and whatnot that's being given off by the airbrush is quite minimal um, if when you're spraying with with your airbrush you've you've got enormous clouds of of paint vapor going everywhere to be honest you're probably doing it wrong you need to think about turning your pressures down and spraying in a, a less exuberant manner perhaps but yes that's what i use uh, for sanding and for smaller paint jobs the the paper dust masks are actually quite adequate for that as well okay so now the parts are all coloured in and they've had a few minutes uh, just to dry off a touch and what we need to do now is get some clear on them we need some clear coat on them so that we can use a wash um, and that clear coat that I use is always pretty much Tamiya X22 clear allegedly this does now work with X20 thinners as, again it never used to again as ever this is this is thinned with Mr Colour Thinner now the way I work it is this is an old 23 milliliter Tamiya jar as you can see and I buy the X22 in the standard jars like so and whenever this starts to run out I take one of these jars and empty it in its entirety into this one I then fill the empty jar back up with Mr Colour Thinner and give it a really good shake this collects all of the lacquer that's left on the inside of the jar on the lid and I then tip that into this as well so what is in here is pre-mixed at 50-50 pretty much exactly I then clean out the now empty and relatively clean jar and put that to one side for use with any paint mixes that I might want to do so remember this is X22 clear which is thinned already at 50-50 with Mr Colour Thinner just the ordinary standard Mr Colour Thinner not self levelling, not rapid, the normal one already 50-50 I then will further thin that so I've got my brush, it's cleaned out since the black and same deal I'm not going to do it over the parts some thinner in there just as an aside this is absurdly tight okay they, they <laughs> paint gets on it and they become incredibly difficult to get off there are a few ways around that uh, soaking it in hot water sometimes will loosen the bond obviously you could use pliers but that runs, runs the risk of breaking things what you need to do is go and find this set upside down it's a Mr Hobby tool, Mr Hobby tools are the greatest in the set you get this and you get one of these uh, these um, teeth are sized to fit Tamiya paint lids so that undoing it becomes a breeze and the other end is sized to fit Mr Colour paint lids and Mr Hobby paint lids so you've got that leverage but clearly the leverage is no good if you can't stop the bottle from spinning so enter from stage left the silicon cup put the bottle put the jar in there and bobs your uncle and normally you can just undo it that way but what i've um that clearly doesn't help with this size jar because it's too big so what i did was i bought a second oh and incidentally the slot in the back here fits the older style mr color lids 
really brilliant tool. So I bought a second one so that I now have two silicon cups and they will stretch and deform so I can fit those onto the bigger style jar or any other sort of jar and instant success the lid comes free but yes you can use them even on sort of these size because you just squish it to fit and open it up uh, I, I don't know what I'd do without these now top 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 tool and top tip I digress it's open now so I've got thinners in my brush got my uh, lacquer open and again I'm going to add you can't see I'm going to add about the same amount of clear as I've got thinner in there just by eye because honestly the mix ratio here is not desperately important and I'll mix that just with the back flushing Again, I'm not really going to do it over the parts because you know what happens when you do things like that. And use the lid. I've tipped paint on enough models that I never ever ever paint without the lid on anymore unless I really am doing something tiny and insignificant. Uh, now these three parts, the two uh, radio boxes and the small gun sight thing, don't need clear. I'm not going to be using a wash on them, just maybe a bit of dry brushing, so I'm not going to clear those. But I'll clear all the rest of the parts. Same way of spraying as I've already been doing. Just get rid of that. So nice, not a heavy coat, a wet coat. Hoping you'll be able to see the shine of it going on. Not, don't actually want a gloss finish as such. We just want to seal the finish that's there. like that There we have it, that's the basic colours all on our internal parts. Uh, the finish we're looking for looks something like this. This is still quite damp. It will dry back a little less glossy than that when it's completely, completely dry. Uh, but that is an adequate level of gloss to allow uh, use of a wash and also to fit the decals because we do have uh, an instrument panel decal. That will be the final finish for these parts as well uh, again it seems to be an almost universal belief amongst modelers that these internal colors are either primer or matte and they are neither it's not primer it's paint um, it is a finish paint because it's there for anti-corrosion anti-corrosion purposes uh, nor is it matte i have here a a shred from a Shackleton, believe it or not, there's the outside and there's the inside. There's our internal colour and it, it's not matte, okay, it's a satin, it's a nice satin finish. Uh, so that will be the final finish and obviously the use of washes will just take a little bit of that shine off it anyway. So that's it for part two. These parts need to dry thoroughly before we start attacking them with washes because the last thing you want is for your wash to attack your not quite dry clear and make a right mess. And have to start all over again um, so next time what we'll do is we'll get the parts washed dry brushed and detail painted ready for joining of the fuselage halves i hope this has been helpful thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the support i really appreciate it and for all of those that are building along make sure and keep up ready for next week's installment thanks again everybody with all that said it only remains for me to say Look after yourselves, look after each other and Genesis out.